stuff. What's it? Uh, what's it like playing together again? Great. <laughs> Sounds great. Feels great. I mean, how's how's it changed in uh, twenty years? I mean, a, it's still a glorious mess. Oh, it sounds a lot better these days because we can play a lot better. Obviously, you know. It's can you? I mean, is it? Is it? I mean, uh, the sort of relationship between the four of you—is it any different from uh, what it was in the late seventies? I think it's the same, but without somebody else sticking their oar in constantly, which they were doing before. Who shall re remain nameless? But, but you had red hair. I think you had red hair. Curly and receding for a lot. Still pretty tense. It can be pretty four tense heads. at times, but that's that's okay. We like it. it. All adds to it. Adds to it. I mean, is, is there much friction in the band because there used to be in the past? We have our moments, but nothing too serious. Every band has their moments. We haven't started yet. Give us a give us a few weeks on the road. We'll probably be at each other's throats. Yeah. We? we haven't all been in a tour bus together yet, so that's the acid test, I think. And, I mean, are you, are you nervous because your first gig's in Finland? No, they're all going to be drunk. Really? Yes, I, I, thought, I thought you were off the booze. No, the, the fucking crowd. Oh. It's their holiday. They all get pissed. And revert to being Vikings. No, we're not nervous again about playing again, if that's what you mean after not playing together for so long. Not at all. So, and John, how, how are you feeling about it? The whole I'm thing? as nervous as I am doing any gig. In 20 years, nothing's changed. I still panic like hell backstage before for one song. Then I come into my element, don't I? Do you care for a Yeah. Way? No, it will spoil my continuity. Oh, sorry. So you're, I mean, you're starting off the tour in Europe. That was always where you had the best gigs. Scandinavia, yeah. But we're in Finland now, oddly enough, because that's where the pistols were supposed to go after America, ah, through one lousy reason or another, things didn't happen. So more or less, we've had a, an 18 year holiday. Is that, is that what it is? With musical excursions of our own, all separate. Uh, reforming for these gigs is no huge big deal to us, but it does seem to annoy a lot of people. More fool them for trying to turn us into a religion, which we are not. It does seem a lot of the critics who are talking about, you know, the Pistols getting back together again, they're talking about the kind of myth, but it seems like yeah, one myth of the reasons... Yeah, their own making, and it's, yeah, that's journalists for you. They've built up this fantasy island that never really existed. Uh, and they're all very confused now, they don't know what to do now that we are actually getting back together, you know, so it's sort of destroyed their, their little thing they had going, really, rewriting our history for us and stuff like that, you know, so... Yeah, it's just a bit too inconvenient for them, which we quite like. That's to think a little bit harder. It's real simple. If you don't like us, don't bother to come. You will not be missed. In the terms end. of... In terms of, um, the way things worked out, the last time you were all together and all the gigs that had to be abandoned and the whole shambles and playing 20 minute sets. Do you feel like you've got something to prove as a live act? No. We're as good as we ever were. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, about, what about playing Ireland? Because the last time you were in Ireland you had uh, a bit of trouble. I've never performed live in Ireland. Just to be an amusement for me and hopefully for the Irish. And, uh, and in terms of the England, the Finsbury Park gig, I mean, that seems to be the one, you know, it's your hometown, it's uh, a bit of a nightmare, really, in terms of making me nervous, but I'll do it. That's a big gig for us as well, considering it's only the third gig in, you know, but what the hell, jump in at the deep end, you know, we always did that, just uh, decide to do things and <laughs> face the consequences later, that's how it always was with us, you know, so it probably always will be. So in terms of... Um, okay, well, yeah, well, another little point is, quite frankly, outside of a few little places in Norway, I can't really imagine or remember any Sex Pistols crowd. There wasn't one. No. We were always received with, like, booze and animosity. Well, if things have changed since then, all the better, but if they remain the same, that will hardly be surprising to me. I'd, I'd say it'd be surprising. I can't see many people 
paying 22 quid to come down and boo you. You'd be surprised, yeah. though. Well, there just seem to be an awful lot of journalists out there these days, more so than audience members. Yeah, but can you imagine a journalist paying 22 quid to get into a gig? Well, they'll they? have to come to ours, because there's no freebies, darlings. Well, glad to hear it. Um, if you want to slag me off, you're going to have to pay for the privilege. Uh, I wasn't going to slag you off. I'm not talking about you. Sorry. Just talking just about that, just journalists, yeah. journalists in general. Um, what sort of influence? I mean, but, uh, the Sex Pistols, everyone, all the journalists talk about how much influence they've had over the music and how they've meant. I mean, what do you think? It's odd influence? that, isn't it? Yes, they do notice that, but at the same time, they seem to bitterly resent it. It's like they built us into this Elvis Presley legend, but they want us to just stay that way and not be an actual reality, which would contradict their rewriting of history. In other words, they talk a lot of shit. So all that really matters is how good or bad we are live, and that's all that ever really mattered. The songs are there, the content is there. The relevance of these songs has not changed in 20 years. There's been nothing more powerful or even equal to, not by any band or genre out there. Except Apart from Public Image and the Leiden Left Field Open Up single. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> Said my bit. <laughs> and, but, and Bucks Fizz. Bucks Fizz, yeah. yeah. We still think we can do it as well, otherwise we wouldn't be doing this, I don't think, yeah. But, I mean, in terms, I mean, you have, you did have an enormous impact yeah, and so what? What does, what does it mean? Yeah, but that it just means people just rip you off, doesn't it? And run off with the loot and the money and all the credit and praise. You and say that, but we didn't get praise or credit until about ten years after, you know. Nobody, nobody gave a shit about us until they started to stop and think for ten minutes about what had happened over the last ten years, you know. It was only in the last ten... When it all went 15, back to normal. Yeah, it's only over the last ten, fifteen years people have been saying how relevant it all was and how they was there at the beginning, you know. Yes, well, to my mind, you wouldn't have any of this pop fans out there but for the Sex Pistols. We opened all the doors. We made all things possible. Before us, it was solid state rock and roll dinosaur and nothing else. Now, those mega bands did their utmost to stop outfits like us existing. In fact, all but cancelled. The whole idea of clubs and Rock was dead, and they wanted it that way. Because I, I was reading a, an interview, one of the recent interviews, and you were saying you wouldn't. Have I, had well, I'll tell you what. One of the most hilarious criticisms of me ever was from one Mike Paul Jagger of the Rolling Stones, I think, where he had the nerve to say I couldn't sing and the band couldn't play. Now, hold on, the Rolling Stones? I mean, uh, virtuosity is not what comes to mind, now, is it? rather pathetic, but he was old school and he wanted it to stay that way. Rhythm and blues, ripping off American yeah. music and trying to pretend it was something of their own. We actually came from none of that place. We invented our own style. Big difference. It was just in this recent interview you were talking and about... And being original, by the way, <laughs> is not a difficult thing. It is not a concept beyond your imaginations, boys and girls. What about, um, you were talking about rap music, and you said you thought that... I haven't uh, yet. Um, well, it was in one of your recent interviews, you were talking about the rap music and saying how that wouldn't have come about if it wasn't for the Sex Pistols. I think none of, not everything you're listening today wouldn't have come about but for someone who had the guts to stand up and say what is. It's the same yeah. concept. God please. Save the Queen comes to mind. Same concept of all that, do it yourself, get up and don't wait for anyone to do you any favours in this business because you'll be just stuck there forever, you know, if you do that. But it sort of goes Lesson wider. Lesson one, do it yourself, do it well, and say thank you to nobody. So what was... But blame everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to let you finish a question. I uh, know, you're not going to let me start a question. Um, what's, what's, what's your favourite memories of the time that you were together. Splitting up. <laughs> oh, don't be predictable. <laughs> I mean, you must, I mean, you know, so it was, it was any of the gigs, I mean, they all seem to have been a bit I think the very party. early shows before anyone knew who he was were the best ones, when everyone was wearing take six suits and kipper ties and flares, you know. 
playing up north of England. Yeah, before the Daily Mirror and the Sun started to give out stereotypical punk imagery to uh, the masses. Yeah, all the bin liners appeared and safety pins and stuff. And studded leather jackets became the order of the day, something we never wore. So, I mean, it seems, it seems I like... I don't really despise all the punk <laughs> cliches, and it's sad that that's what people seem to want to remember. But that wasn't the actual reality. It was none of that. Above and beyond all that. You're going to get an awful lot of punks coming down at Finsbury Park. Well, they're paying for it. Perhaps they'll come and realise that they might have got it a little bit wrong over the years. There's not that and many punks twice. left, are there? Oh, there's still a few hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they'd all gone so to blue us old never. granddad's yeah. lurking about in the bushes. They probably ain't got 22 quid though, have they? That's right. Yeah, they will, they'll, they'll, they'll beg for it. Yeah, they'll right. come right somehow. Chuck some no, they'll spend 2,000 quid on designer punk outfits, but they won't fork out a couple of quid for a gig. So when when the band split up, I mean, um, you know, say it was mostly due to the dodgy management, do you sort of regret not? Sort of saying, Bugger McLaren, and well, the three of you going off and doing your own thing. Well, I think it took a lot of balls for us to say fuck it all, because we were at a point where we could have been biggest thing ever, and we just said fuck it, because we were all sick of each other, whatever way you want to look at it, and just ended it. You know what I mean? Was now, it? Was it? That's the way it is with us. We're just absolutely barefaced, honest to each other. It wasn't working, so stop. I mean, we, this doesn't work, we stop. We could have stayed together and, and made millions of pounds or whatever, but that wasn't what was in, on our minds, you know what I mean? Back then. Back then. <laughs> but it's changed now. I mean, do you think this could be something more than just a talk? Can't really see it myself. It's hard to say. One, I think it's like one just uh, one day or week at a time with us is enough to look forward to. I think at the moment, I don't want to look any further than that. So, Glenn, did you? I mean, you you were the first to leave the band, kicked out of the band because you liked the Beatles. Or... No, yeah, uh, that's the story. Yeah. Um, I mean, did, when you got the phone call, did you think, no, I don't want to, I don't want to get back to Yeah. No, because there was things preceding the phone call. I haven't been spoken before. I mean, there was no such thing as a phone call at the time, and everybody was hit to what everybody else was doing. And it was a gradual realisation that there was still a common ground between everybody. And once that certain person was out of the way, the, the, the bond was a lot stronger than had been thought. Because it does seem as though, you know, you all pretty much get on with each other. Wouldn't be doing it otherwise. What'd be the point? There ain't no money in the world worth it. If you can't get on with the people you're working with, don't do it. The end. Yeah, I like the Rolling Stones. I think they've got this image of us where they think we're bashing each other up every day. I mean, maybe that was true a long time ago, you know, but I mean, we're not the bosom buddies or anything, but we, we get along OK, you know. We won't expect us to be killing each other already, I think. I think the key to success as a band is not to mix socially. Quite right. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> so what, you won't all be heading off to the after after show party together? Well, we've all got our own ones. If there is know. one, nobody's told us about it. <laughs> Odd that. Is there? I've no idea. No one's told me. Probably. Yeah, I don't know the last time we read anything. Yeah, Ruben. Yeah, Ruben. That's it. Tools off. <laughs> do, you say, do you say that about 12 times a day, or is it? What? what? Tools off? No, I've committed myself to this. Like every, anything I do, I do it. I put all the thoughts beforehand, and once I've committed, I go all out for it. If it falls apart, it won't be through my making. So we will have to look at one of these three. Now, who's, who's going to be the first to jump ship? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Hopefully, none of us. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> none of us. So, um, what kind of fans? Oh, the people who turn up at a gig to boo. I mean, what can they expect? Look, people who pay money must get what they deserve, and that's the way it is. This is what this has always been about with us. If you pay money to come and see us, we'll do the best we can, period. It's never been any different. And in terms of the songs, I mean, is it going to just be 
the old stuff. Well, yes. What's wrong with that? I mean, the thing with most bands. There's a bunch of new tunes, and it'd be like Johnny and his fabulous showbiz consorts. Uh, it'd be like kind of gnarly and bit bit off. I don't think people want to hear a it's whole a new doors. set of new stuff. They want to hear people haven't even heard us play the old stuff, you know. That's the thing. Most bands do their same material for 20 years until their fans get fed up with it, and they get fed up with playing it themselves. We've taken exactly the opposite approach. When we played all that stuff when we was rehearsing recently, it just sounds completely fresh and brand new. And most people haven't seen that, so. I think I think if you didn't play the old stuff, if you just turned up and yeah, did that, but then there would be a right, you know. So but, oh, but, that's an idea. That's a very good idea. Yeah, perhaps we won't. How's it going? Uh, I don't know what people are expecting. What are they expecting? <laughs> we're, we're a band, you know. We're going to go out there and play some songs. What what more do they want? You know. <laughs> They've brought us up into this this big concert that we probably aren't, you know. Or probably are. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I was just wondering. I mean, it's just trying to get round to the idea of whether you'd come up with any new songs or. Well, we're all perfectly capable of it. Next question. We're working. Oh. On. That means uh, a rude word. Oh, what did you say? Um, I don't know. <laughs> what about? I mean, would you be doing any any sort of new covers? Is, is there no? Um, no, you get what you get. You'll see. be grateful for it, and you will be appreciative because we work hard at this. There's no laziness involved. It's a surprise. It's not a gang of drunken slobs falling onto the Same stage. Same shit, basically. <laughs> What about um, playing America? Because um, obviously that was where you split up. I mean, you're going back to some of the, well, the same towns that you went to the first time round. I mean, that's got to be strange. Well, we never played New York. We never played a bunch of places where we are playing this time. It was down south last time, mostly. Which was a bit of a mistake. So we haven't played in a lot of places where we're going to be playing. I don't think it'll be that strange. It's a long time to do Yeah, I mean, there, you know, you know it's, it's, it's the same time. concept. But it was worse over there than it was here. Because they didn't know what, what we was all about when we went over there. Even though it was a little while afterwards. You know, their idea of what we were about was totally wrong. And it didn't mean anything over there. Because there wasn't in a repression and all that. So, I mean, it was, it was quite a dangerous thing to be in the late 70s, a sex pistol. I mean, you all felt, uh, you know, in de uh, physically threatened. Well, we were, we were beaten up and threatened walking down the street. People don't realise that, just being a punk then, you could get your, your head smashed in, you know, walking down the road. It was a pretty tense time, you know. Yeah, look, look what happened to him. Yeah, uh, that was, uh, but I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing really comparable to that today. Well, well, this, well, is, is that an saying? improvement then? Oh, uh, yes, I think so. So thank us for that, because somebody had to stand out and say, stop it. Because that's... I stop mean, being so stiff and straight and playing safe all the time. Even though I look out on the streets of London now and I'm utterly appalled at the way people dress and behave. They've all gone so yuppie and they're into their... Coffee au lait, and it's just nonsense. <laughs> they all look like they dress at Marks and Spencers. Not that you should all like be outlandish, but you should have a sense of individuality, I would imagine. Just, you're all dull. I mean, look at you. Wake up. I'm sorry. I, I would have dressed up if I knew it was uh, if it meant that much. <laughs> um. So, I mean, is, is there a kind of feeling with the bands that there's kind of unfinished business that you want to uh, Amongst to? ourselves, yes. We're doing this because we respect each other. And if nobody else does, that's just tough tits, boys and girls. Doesn't really matter. So, that, I mean, the last words you said on stage was that Sex Pistol has uh, ever got the feeling you've been had. Cheated. Cheated, Cheated. sorry. Um, What's going to be your opening line in Finland? We're the Sex Pistols. No one likes us, and we don't care. That sounds good. What, what, what's, what's going to be? <laughs> the that sounds good. Anyway, listen. Uh, <laughs> um, 
just sort through my questions. I um, <laughs> Come on, we've got a top of the pops. Oh, right, oh, right, yeah, we've yeah, we got to sell out and go on top of the pops. Do you mind? <laughs> Is, is this is this a wake for the Sex Pistols? A wake? Yeah. No. I think it's a celebration of what it's it all about, first time around. It's like we said, we're finishing the job off before it all ended so horribly and haphazardly. It was just awful, that last tour of America. But uh, it would be true to say, in the Irish uh, sense of the word wake, uh, if anyone's going to put the nails on our coffin, it will be we, us. Nobody else has a say-so in this. Nobody can tell us what we are or what we are not. We're the real thing. We know what we are. You either like it or hate it. There was. I don't think anybody could call us nice. And surely that's the best compliment ever. To not be nice. Back in the, um, the late 70s, I mean, you used to attack all the groups like Pink Floyd, who were just going around the stadiums yeah. playing all the old Still will as well. Yeah, like you, don't, you don't think that's, that's what you've become, in a sense? No. no we haven't how? played. Please. We haven't pray tell how. Um, just going around the old stadiums what playing the old uh, stadiums. Uh, what old festivals? stadiums would those be? Uh, places like... Like Finsbury. Wembley? Do you think it's different playing Finsbury Park? It's a field. What more do you need to know? Stan Goodfields too. And apart from that, the actual reality is uh, most cities in this country still won't let us into their crux, well, crappy little venues. It's just outright wholesale banning. But it all goes under the wonderful disguise of the insurances won't back us up. That's not really the truth of it. There's still the same old prejudices out there. And I don't see how you compare, can compare us to them. No one cares. We, we have been there all he likes, Paul. We don't, haven't been... Don't even bother we to try and justify the nonsense like that. We haven't been uh, playing around, boring everyone to death for the last 20 years. You know, that's what we're saying. That's what we said earlier. Hey, what's your life? I get yes on stadium. Yeah, yeah, we're selling out. Who cares? Yeah. Bollocks. I'm off. That's it. All right. Perfect. Thanks a lot. <laughs> have fun. Thank you. Well, we try. will. <laughs> See ya. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck.